Thank you very much for joining me on this Thursday. I'm Brian Shields. I want to get into one of the new headlines, which will be the development in the Gulf of Mexico. A tropical storm or a hurricane is possible. I want to get into that watching this area here, which is actually going to lift to the north in the Gulf. I'm going to break that down in depth watching this. This is Franklin. Unfortunately, yesterday we did have some deaths in uh, the Dominican Republic. We're thinking of you. Some spots in the DR were totally dry. Others, though, we had some landslides that injured a couple people, and we had at least one person gets swept away in the flooding, which uh, you know has been uh, our concern. So again, thinking of you in the uh, DR, but this all pulling away. We have what's left over of Emily up there. Another system that may develop, that one should stay away. So I want to cover everything watching Bermuda, Canada, down the road. Here's the flare up. My friends in Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Honduras. With this area of uh, rain and storms here, we're going to see a higher potential of flooding. Even a few mudslides possible. Costa Rica, Panama, we've had those areas of rain over toward northern Colombia and I've been watching the scattered showers that have been around the last couple days in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands. This is the hot spot to watch for something developing and lifting to the north. I showed you this yesterday that I'd be watching this area very carefully. Now here's the thing. I don't like to kind of say, hey, this may develop and then it may not and I'm not sure and all that good stuff. But my concern is this year in particular it's the water. The water temperatures are always warm this time of year, but they are above average. And that's why a hurricane is possible. I wouldn't normally say that in these conditions um, if this were, say, last year and the water wasn't as warm. But this year with the warm water temperatures, anything close to home that moves into an area of pretty low wind shear, which will be the case in this, has the chance to flare up quickly. So I just kind of watch ahead of things. The European model does develop this into a tropical storm. It kind of goes on and off, sometimes makes it a hurricane. Uh, you get these different runs of the model. They're always continuously updated. The GFS shows some development, but doesn't show a storm. So uh, not everything is showing this major hurricane developing, but I've been watching the environmental conditions, and I see why a model like the European model is saying, hey, this could become a tropical storm, even the potential of a hurricane. So point being, as it stands now, as I watch some development here, regardless of if it develops or not, uh, anywhere from about New Orleans, swinging back through Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida as a whole. Keep a very close eye on this, and this is why. If something does develop, there'll be a front here, and I wanna show you that in a second. I wanna show you the European model and the American model. There'll be a front here, so if something develops, it would get drawn more into this direction, more into the direction of Florida. And that's why in these spots, again, uh, please pay very close attention. And again, this year, it's the close to home stuff that I'm concerned about because it can intensify very quickly because of those warm water temperatures. Now, here's the European model, Caribbean here, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, Puerto Rico, Haiti, the DR, Cuba. Uh, we get back toward Belize. Here's Honduras, Nicaragua. Again, watching this spot here, this is Franklin, and I'm gonna break that down down further in depth for you in Bermuda. I want to show you the models on that and back through Canada. As we go out in time here, here's Florida, Bahamas right here. Here's New Orleans, Louisiana. This is getting out in time. Let me stop it this weekend. This is by the time we get into Saturday night and Sunday morning, watching some moisture building right here. So again, still through Sunday morning, I don't expect a name system or anything over the next couple of days, but what I'm gonna be watching out for the next two days is the buildup of moisture. If two days from now it looks like this and we've got a lot of rain near Jamaica, the Cayman Islands and Cuba, even near the Yucatan of Mexico, that's gonna be a concern. That would tell me that there's a higher potential of development. Now look at this green here as you get over toward parts of Arkansas, Missouri, stretching back toward Texas, there's going to be a front dropping in. That's what I was talking about. This front as it drops in, whatever is over here will start to draw it up toward the eastern Gulf of Mexico, kind of make its way a little bit more toward Florida. Now, the European model is showing some development. I've been looking at the very latest runs on this, this and kind of uh, watching the trends. It's backed off a little bit since yesterday. Yesterday was making this thing a hurricane. Now, a tropical storm, borderline hurricane, so kind of fluctuates, that's typical, but you see the front in here, that green in there, that would be the rain there, that would help to draw this closer to Florida, but this is by the time we get into late Monday, and on Monday, that's when it could start to develop into a named system, and then things could intensify pretty quickly if, if again, it starts to get wrapped up just because of those warm water temperatures. So as we get
get into Monday. It could be a developing system near Cuba and then lifting up potentially as a tropical storm or hurricane, not out of the question, as we work our way into Tuesday, Tuesday into Wednesday, very close to Florida. There is Franklin just off to the west of uh, Bermuda. More on that in a moment. So again, this is one scenario. Not everything is seeing that. So again, I don't want this to be uh, like uh, a, hi uh, a hype uh, kind of clickbait channel. Not everything is seeing that, but again, there are conditions that could make this a hurricane. So I don't want to talk out of both sides of my mouth, but I think you're, think you're hearing me on this. All right, we get a look at what we've got going on uh, with the American model. Now, the American model is different. Now, they're both seeing something. So this is by the time we get into Saturday. And again, I, I want to get into the Eastern Pacific. There'll be a little development over here. It's not showing anything as crazy as yesterday, watching my friends on the southwest coast of Mexico. But you see this moisture building here this weekend. This is on Sunday. And then as we work our way from Sunday into Monday, this is by Monday, extra rain. You see it by the Cayman Islands, Cuba, and the Bahamas. Now, the American model's not, the American model's been having a pretty good season so far. It's not showing development, but it is showing the buildup of moisture. So while the models are a little bit different, overall, there is some agreement that, hey, there's going to be this area of rain and storms we need to track, and it could develop. So again, at least there's some agreement that somewhere in here, this one a little more toward Cuba, Bahamas, and Florida, Cayman Islands, showing some of the extra moisture. So European model showing a a lot of development, not so much on the American model. We'll see how it shakes out the next couple of days, but both are at least seeing something there. And you see these water temperatures. Look at this almost pinker shading as we get back toward uh, the northern Gulf, eastern Gulf of Mexico. That's where some of the warmest water has been recorded. Uh, some of the warmest water since 1851, since some of the records go back. I know there's been different ways of measuring it, and again, some differences, but point being, it's, it's super warm in the water. We know that. Water temperatures 30 to 31 degrees Celsius Fahrenheit, 90s. We had some water temperatures over by the Florida Keys earlier this season near 100 degrees. So again, and it's not just the water temperature at the top of the surface, but the heat content's pretty substantial. So that means as a storm kind of churns up the water, even down below, it's pretty warm. So it would just bring up more water to feed off of, more warm water to feed off of. So not the best of spots. That's my concern. That's kind of the point I'm trying to get across. The water is super warm right there. I am a little bit concerned that something will flare up. Hopefully not, but I'm watching it. Now, as we get back here, off the coast now, the Dominican Republic and Haiti, that is Franklin. Now, being to the north, you see a little flare-up right here. Uh, getting a little closer to Port-au-Prince, some showers and storms will be uh, possible as we go throughout the day. I'll watch out for that, especially where we had flooding. We had more of that on the south side of the Dominican Republic. Some spots north side had next to nothing yesterday, but you see some of the rain and storms getting clipped by some in Puerto Rico. Watching this blob out here, my friends in Antigua and Barbuda, Guadalupe, uh, off the uh, coast of uh, Dominica, not seeing signs of organization uh, out of that. But here's the latest on what we're seeing with Franklin. Winds right now at about 50. It's a tropical storm. All on track should become uh, a hurricane, even a category two hurricane. And this will lift its way up near Bermuda. Uh, looks like it'll split the United States and Bermuda. And on this heading, this would be far enough off to the west. That would be some good news for Bermuda. I just hope it stays on that heading. Now, watching the American model, which has done a pretty good job uh, with this system overall. This is by later today, blob of rain. It's a tropical storm the next couple days, staying off, again, as expected, the heaviest weather, off to the east of the Turks and Caicos. It was a close call. I was wondering a couple days ago how close this would get uh, to the Turks and Caicos. Now, as we move forward, here's Bermuda. By the time we get into Sunday, that's when it really starts to wrap up into a hurricane. And then after that, lifting close to Bermuda. So watching Bermuda carefully, there could be some rain bands that work in out ahead of it. But again, on this heading, the worst weather would stay off to the west. Watching you in Bermuda. Now, what's going to happen down the road, while it's going to become a hurricane, it is going to lift up toward Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and again, it could get tied into a front. And this one, again, there'll be a predecessor rain event. All that means is, at ahead of it, I expect a blob of moisture. You see it right there? So there'll be some extra rain streaming at ahead of the core of this system, also getting tied into a front. How close does it get to Nova Scotia? Still wait and see. This is by the time we get into next week, but it looks like it could get tied to a front. Looks a little bit closer than what I was seeing yesterday. So again, watching 
the Atlantic region of Canada as we work our way into the middle of next week. I'll keep very close tabs on that. For my friends in Canada, I have no choice. My mother-in-law is Canadian, so I got to keep a very close eye on that. All right, let's get a look at what we got going on for the wind tracker on this. Again, winds right now, tropical storm force, that white shading. But look what happens as we go out in time. See that red shading popping up, and there's even a little bit of that uh, yellow shading in there. Those are winds of 145 kilometers an hour or 90 miles per hour. I expect them to get to around 200 kilometers an hour or even 125 miles per hour. That's a possibility. That's why we really need this to stay to the west of Bermuda. Bermuda. And then after that, this by the way, as as we work our way into Tuesday early next week, then we see a front moving in gets tied into that. Hopefully it misses Nova Scotia. Again, watching out for some of the rain and then some of the gusty winds as a whole. Sorry, I don't want to block the map on you. This is by the time we get into Wednesday and Thursday, very gusty winds. There should be gusty winds at the least, even if it stays offshore, because again, we've got that front zipping in that kind of ties things together. So I expect at least some tropical storm gust in the Atlantic region of Canada. Modeling again, Again, still takes it very close. So we'll see down the road. There's Bermuda. Almost everything keeps it off to the west of Bermuda. So as far as the names are concerned, we've got the leftovers of Emily out there. That could get renamed Emily. Another tropical disturbance out there. So I'm not sure which one gets, gets a name next. We'll see. But Idalia, Jose, Katia, some of the next names on the list ahead of schedule or above average for the season. Let's hope things uh, behave as we get closer to the peak of the season, which is September 10th. All right, let's get a look in the eastern Pacific, the flare-up of rain and storms. A couple spots could develop, one here and one over here, so I'll watch out for that. So southwest coast of Mexico at the least, at the least, I do expect uh, heavier weather working in as this system tries to get organized. Not sure it'll become a hurricane yet, but at least some heavier rain. And again, here's that uh, area that I'm watching over towards Central America and the Gulf of Mexico for that potential of uh, development. Still a wait and see on that. I wish I had more. I wish I knew exactly at this point, but just trying to give you the heads up on everything I'm kind of seeing and thinking out there. So Jamaica, now with this active weather around, even if this doesn't become a named system, there's going to be extra rain around Jamaica. So the rain chance is going to start to increase over the next few days. Belize, a 70% chance today and a 50% chance tomorrow. Puerto Rico, rain chance about 40 to 50 50%. Again, what's left of Franklin to the north, but some of those kind of feeder bands could give us some scattered showers and storms. Worse weather, fortunately, staying off to the east of the Turks and Caicos. Bahamas, rain chance about 30% the next couple days. 40% chance Trinidad and Tobago, we are still hot, but the rain chance starting to tick up over toward Port of Spain. Barbados, rain chance about 50%. So getting a little more active again in the eastern Caribbean, St. Lucia included, 60% chance of rain for tomorrow. Working our way into Haiti. Again, I showed you that blob of rain that nearby uh, right now. Still some rain and storms, isolated flooding on the very back end of what is uh, Franklin, which is up to the north now. Dominican Republic, same thing, 50% chance with some of those cleanup efforts ongoing where we had the uh, flooding yesterday. Grenada, 20% chance today. Picking up a bit, 40% chance by Saturday. Limited rain chance, U.S. and British Virgin Islands. There is a chance, maybe may more like a 30% chance today. I've been watching some of the moisture over the last few minutes uh, near uh, Puerto Rico, and again, some of that may squeak in. There is a chance of a shower. Let me know on the Virgin Islands what you get or don't get for today. Aruba on the dry side for the most part. And same thing over toward Curacao. That rain chance very limited. 10-20% chance. Mainly dry the next few days through the ABC Islands. St. Vincent and the Grenadines by Saturday. We're at a 40% chance. And Cayman Islands like Jamaica. Rain chance is going to be picking up with that moisture around as we get through the weekend forecast. Watching out for some isolated areas of flooding. Cayman Islands and up toward uh, Cuba. Guadalupe, rain chance 30 to 40 percent, 50 percent chance for tomorrow in Dominica, 50 percent chance on Saturday. And as we work our way into Martinique, 50 percent chance Friday, 50 percent chance Saturday. Passing shower, St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat, 20 percent chance. Hit or miss shower possible in Tiga, Barbuda, about a 20 to 30 percent chance. I'll keep an eye on that moisture off to the east. There's that chance it gets a little bit closer. Not organized, but watching that. Anguilla, rain chance 20 percent, 20 percent chance. St. Martin, Seba, Stacia for today, a 30 percent chance tomorrow. And then as we get back to our parts of Central America, that rain chance is really high. Costa Rica, it's not all day stuff. Actually, this morning, most of the rain has been to the north. But again, overall, that flood threat continues just because we've been so active over toward Panama. But Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, we're seeing that area of rain that is starting to pick up some. Northern Venezuela, 30 to 40 percent chance. Now, as we work our way into Guyana and Suriname, drying out. It is going to get hot. Drought conditions are going to be on the increase. All 
over toward uh, Suriname. All right, so again, Franklin watching Bermuda and Canada, Central America, that rain building, lifting to the north, could start to develop, watching that Gulf of Mexico very, very carefully. And again, not even halfway through hurricane season, it ends November 30. So I'll keep you posted, watching everything around the clock. Thank you for sharing this channel and being part of this weather community. Thank you for putting the uh, time to put the uh, comments around the Dominican Republic yesterday. It was interesting to see the spots that were dry and others that just kept getting that rain yesterday. So I do appreciate that information. I hope you have a good day ahead.